Okay, thanks everyone. All right, um, I think appropriate to start with this. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hooray. All right, well, thanks for having me come in and talk about all things fool and politics, which I know is kind of an axiomoron, but uh, we're going to talk about morons and jesters and uh, uh, let's see. But first, I hope you all like bells because um, I've got some bells for you. Here we go. All right, first the bells. Bells, bells. There we go. There, yeah, nice smiles, but I haven't even done anything yet. So allow me to introduce myself properly. My name is Sebastian, and I am a fool. <laughs> oh, but I'm not just any fool. I'm a professional fool. <laughs> Unlike you amateurs. <laughs> Amateur fools, and excuse me, you see, I have a little fool philosophy in life. I believe we're all fools. Seems to be part of the human condition. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I've modeled my juggling show, and tonight my, my presentation, after the Renaissance jester, a professional fool. Of course, in the case of the jester, he would work for the king. The king, right, I knew... He, you all knew that, right? The jester worked for the king. Now, that was a very important person to be working for. I mean, the jester working for the king was inherently a political position because the king was the center of government. He created law. And so, like all lawmakers, the king had to have good advice. And where does the king get good advice? Well, he'd have advisors that go across to other countries and the land and come back, report to the king. But when you're reporting to a king, a monarch, you had to be very careful what you said, how you said it. Because if the king didn't like it, <laughs> it's been known to happen. I mean, it brings to mind the saying, kill the messenger. So an advisor to a king may not actually be as honest with his opinion that he might be. And so the king didn't get the kind of advice that he necessarily needs to get. Now, the jester. The jester is often thought as an entertainer, and yes, he did entertain the king, but more importantly, he advised the king. He was the most important of all who advised the king because the king, because the jester could, could say anything he wanted to, day or night. Of course, he would do it in the form of a jest, a joke. He'd make the king laugh. <laughs> Laughter is very powerful. You see, I, <laughs> I start laughing, it makes her laugh. It goes over here and over there, and through the building, nay, across the city, nay, around the world. And before you know it, we're all laughing. I know I'm an idealistic fool, but, <laughs> but it's a beautiful dream. And you see the Jester working for the king, the center of the government. The jester working for the king, well, that would be like me working for the president. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Me working for the president. Unfortunately, the <laughs> president already has fools working for him. <laughs> and it doesn't seem to matter which president we're talking about. So, I want to just take a little bit of time now and show you a little bit about what the jester would do. If he thought the king was being foolish in some of his decision making, maybe he was going to go you know, to war with the neighboring and the, you know, over something foolish, and the jester was trying to make a point. Okay, He might use juggling and music and all of that. And it just so happens I am a juggler. Everybody go, yay. yay. All right. But we're just going to start with four today. Actually, I want to show you the basics of juggling because I'm a real believer in the power of juggling to help. <laughs> yeah, she knows it's what's coming. I am going to teach you all to juggle really fast here. Step one. Okay, three ball cascade. The balls are crisscrossing, right? If you break this down into the two steps it takes to learn this. One, the figure eight. Same, right in front of my face. Same height, both directions. Follow any one of the balls, they're all doing that figure eight. Spread it out evenly into thirds, and you're juggling. All right, so that's the crisscross. That's the easy way. Now, there's more to say about this, but I want to show you a four-ball trick, and I need everyone 
to watch really close. Can you see the ball switch between my right and my left hand? Does everybody see that? Yes? So yeah, you see that switching? Yeah? yeah. No, they don't. I fooled you. <laughs> yeah, you see, you got to keep your eye on the jester. He's a trickster, and he will try to fool you. Because you see, if I spread my hands apart, can you see it now? That it's two in one hand, two in the other. But when I bring it together like this, it looks like they're switching, but they're not. It's an optical illusion. But there's another reason why you probably saw them switch. And that's because I told you so. I came in here as the authority on juggling. <laughs> and I told you they switched. So you see them switch. So it just goes to show you, any fool can make you see things that aren't really there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And advertisers do this. They want to trick you all the time because you know, they want you to buy their product whether you need it or not. You know? And you know, well, you know, capitalism has its place. And if you need it, it's nice to know about these things. But the advertisers, they trick you. And more and more in our politics, they're tricking us. The weapons of mass distraction. And so the jester's role is to bring these to light. And so I tricked you, and the balls do not switch. It's two in one, two in the other. With three, they do the crisscross. So this and this are the same thing. All right. So there's a quick four ball trick. And I have so little time with you here today. I just want to jump ahead and show you another trick. These are the juggling clubs of doom. Ooh. That makes this more exciting. All right. Now I have a trick to show you. It goes quick. Watch closely. It's my favorite. I love this trick. <laughs> not quite the reaction. Well, thank you, but not quite the reaction I was hoping for there. Okay. Tell you what, I'm going to do another trick with the juggling clubs of doom. And if you like this trick better than the first one, by all means, let me hear it. This is a test. Don't worry, there's no grades. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hooray. So if you like the next trick better than the first, you know what to do. Are you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Here it is. Hop, hey, ho, hip, hip. Hooray! Woo! Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! So it just goes to show you it's not what you do. It's how you do it. A little bit of philosophy that we learned along the way here. So this trick that I've been doing here, this one, not that one. You know what I call that trick? You know what I call that? I call that a mistake. <laughs> So, the big trick with the three clubs is that. It's called yay. a yay, that's, that's right. But it's only one third of the big trick. It's called a flourish. I think they named it after the old sword play and they wrap it around the sword, a flourish. And that's one third of the big trick. Two thirds, second third. Hup, same thing, other hand. All right? So this leaves one more third to the great trick, and I'm going to throw in this triple. Put it all together. One third, two thirds, throw in the triple with low ceilings. Hold on, with low ceilings. Oh, I don't want your pity. Hold on. And all together, it looks like this. Up, hey, triple. There it is. Woo! Crowd goes wild. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Huzzah. Hip, hip. Hooray. Whee! But hold on. I'm not done yet. Because I want to share with you now another role of the jester with a little bit of music here. All right, here we go.
I wrote that myself, especially that last note. Did, did that last note, did it make you just, just feel a little weird? I mean, this note, you knew where it was, you knew where it was coming, and it wasn't coming. Did it make you feel a little uncomfortable? I mean, that, then it resolves. And it's even called that in music, res resolution. Res so that's the kind of thing to be brought into our awareness that the jester would do, and in our own awareness. And so there's the concept of, okay, I'm a fool, but what kind of fool am I? Am I the kind of fool that is afraid to open up inside of my community because I'm afraid of what they might think? Am I a, a, a wise fool, the wizard's fool, who has a certain wisdom about him? That's the kind of gesture you want working for the king who could give good advice and has a certain wisdom. Am I the blessed fool, the, the one who may not be entirely on the same level of reality that the normal people are? And the blessed fool comes with his own innocent, her own way of communicating on a totally different level than the words or the bits. So what kind of fool are you? So thanks again, everybody. Sebastian Miles, professional fool. Woo!